Across Europe, a dramatic weather battle is underway, unfolding on a scale rarely seen in recent years. The continent finds itself caught between two powerful and opposing forces, each shaping the daily lives of millions. From the north, Arctic air pushes relentlessly southward bringing deep freezes and heavy snow to Scandinavia and beyond. Icy winds whip across the landscape, transforming cities and countryside alike into frozen wonderlands and making travel and daily routines a challenge for many. Meanwhile, warm, moist air from the Atlantic and North Africa surges north, delivering record-breaking warmth to Spain, France, and the UK. In these regions, people bask in unseasonably mild temperatures, with some even enjoying outdoor cafes and early spring blooms, a stark contrast to the deep freeze gripping the north. These two air masses collide over Central Europe, creating a volatile battleground, what meteorologists call a fight zone. Here, the clash of temperatures and moisture creates the perfect recipe for dramatic and sometimes dangerous weather events. The temperature gradient is extreme, sub-zero cold on one side, spring-like warmth, just a few hundred miles away. This sharp divide can be seen on weather maps and even felt within a single day's journey, as travelers move from icy streets to sunlit parks. This sharp contrast fuels powerful storms, strong winds, and unpredictable weather. Thunderstorms, heavy rain and even sudden snow squalls can erupt with little warning, keeping residents and forecasters on high alert. Weather models show air at 5,000 feet as cold as 6 degrees over northern UK, while it's 120 degrees over south-central France at the same time. This staggering difference highlights just how unusual and intense this weather pattern truly is. This isn't a subtle shift. It's a colossal thermal wall dividing the continent. The boundary between these air masses is so sharp, it can be seen from space and felt on the ground with fog, clouds, and even sudden changes in wind direction marking the divide. The outcome of this epic struggle will decide who gets snow, who gets rain, and who experiences both in the coming weeks. Cities just a few hours apart may face completely different weather, making planning and preparation more important than ever. The scale and intensity of this setup make this winter truly unusual. Rivers may flood while roads just miles away are buried in snow, and communities must adapt quickly to changing conditions. The stage is set for a winter of extremes, where Europe's weather story will be written by the ongoing clash of these mighty air masses. The UK and Ireland sit right on the front line of this atmospheric clash, where powerful air masses from the Atlantic and the Arctic meet in a constant tug of war. This unique position means that the weather here is rarely settled for long, and dramatic changes can happen, in a matter of hours. Even a small shift in the boundary between these air masses can plunge the region into a deep freeze, with icy winds and snow, or just as quickly return it to the milder, wetter conditions brought in by the Atlantic. Residents are used to seeing their weather apps change by the hour, and it's not uncommon to experience sunshine, rain, and even sleet all in a single day. This explains the wild temperature swings. Southern England can feel like April, basking in unexpected warmth, while at the very same time, Scotland shivers under wintry showers and biting winds. The contrast can be so stark that it feels like two different countries experiencing two different seasons. The UK is literally split in two by this thermal divide, with a sharp line often visible on weather maps separating the cold north from the milder south. This boundary can shift rapidly, making it difficult to predict exactly who will get the worst of the weather. Forecasting is a challenge, as the battle line wobbles unpredictably, bringing drastic changes from day to day. Meteorologists must constantly update their models to keep up with the shifting patterns, and even then, surprises are common. This fight zone fuels the development of low-pressure systems leading to active, unsettled weather. Expect strong winds, heavy rain, and a mix of sleet and snow, sometimes all within a single storm. These conditions can disrupt travel and daily life, keeping everyone on their toes. In the coming weeks, the cold air is expected to push further south, gradually ending the early November warmth that many have enjoyed. This transition will be marked by sharp drops in temperature and an increase in wintry weather. Scotland will feel the chill first, with snow and frost making an early appearance. But, the cold won't stop there. The icy air will dig into England and Wales as well, bringing widespread frosts and the first real taste of winter for many. The true start of winter is imminent, and soon much of the UK will be blanketed in wintry scenes. Towns and countryside alike will transform as the cold takes hold. The UK's weather will be a roller coaster. Prepare for anything, from sudden sunshine to fierce storms. In this crossfire of the elements adaptability is key, and the only certainty is change.
To truly understand the Arctic air's journey southward, we must first look high above the surface to a powerful force swirling in the stratosphere, the polar vortex. This vast spinning mass of cold air acts as the Arctic's unruly gatekeeper, shaping winter weather patterns across the northern hemisphere. When the polar vortex is strong and well-organized, it forms a tight, icy barrier that locks frigid air in the Arctic. This containment keeps much of Europe and North America shielded from the harshest cold, often resulting in milder, less severe winters for millions of people. But this year, the vortex is showing signs of weakness. Imagine a spinning top that's starting to lose its balance and wobble. As it falters, its grip on the Arctic's cold air loosens. Powerful energy waves from the lower atmosphere surge upward, disrupting the vortex's structure. This process, known as sudden stratospheric warming, rapidly heats the upper atmosphere and slows the vortex's winds, making it unstable. A weakened vortex can no longer contain the Arctic's cold. Instead, frigid air escapes and plunges southward, spilling over Europe and bringing the threat of severe cold snaps. The jet stream, which normally flows smoothly, becomes wavy and erratic. These dramatic bends pull Arctic air deep into Europe while at the same time, warm air surges north elsewhere, creating sharp temperature contrasts and fueling extreme weather. Multiple computer models are sounding the alarm. Nearly all agree that the polar vortex will remain weaker than average through December and January, increasing the risk of cold outbreaks. The latest forecasts from the German DWD and Japanese JMA models even predict record weak vortex conditions, something rarely seen in recent decades. For meteorologists, a weak polar vortex is a major red flag. It signals a much higher chance of a cold, turbulent winter ahead for Europe and beyond. This rare setup raises the odds of significant prolonged Arctic outbreaks, periods when icy air lingers, bringing snow, frost, and bitter winds. The Arctic's gatekeeper is faltering and as a result, Europe now stands directly in the path of the coldest air the Arctic has to offer this winter. The Pacific and Indian Oceans are sending strong signals to Europe this winter. La Nina, with cooler Pacific waters, favors high-pressure blocking in the North Atlantic, opening the door for Arctic air to flow south. This block acts like a rock in a river, diverting the jet stream and loading the dice for a colder pattern. Add the Indian Ocean Dipole IOD, which is in its most negative phase since 1996. A negative IOD reinforces La Nina's effects, further promoting high-latitude blocking. When La Nina and a negative IOD occur together, history shows a much higher chance of a weak polar vortex and early winter cold in Europe. These oceanic drivers are working in tandem, priming the atmosphere for a colder than normal winter. The global climate system is stacking the odds for a European winter chill. Beyond La Nina, the Madden-Julian Oscillation MJO, is a fast-moving tropical pulse that can trigger major weather shifts. The MJO's current phase is moving into Phase 7, which, during La Nina winters, strongly correlates with high-pressure blocking and cold in Western Europe. The MJO acts as an amplifier, triggering pattern changes and helping weaken the polar vortex. Its timing in late November could be the catalyst for a colder regime. Add in an easterly quasi-biennial oscillation, QBO, which also favors a weak vortex. With La Nina, negative IOD, MJO phase 7, and an easterly QBO, the classic recipe for a cold European winter is in place. All the ingredients are coming together for a memorable winter. Two key indices, Arctic Oscillation, AO, and North Atlantic Oscillation, NAO, help forecasters track Europe's winter pattern. AO measures pressure differences between the Arctic and mid-latitudes. A negative AO means a weak polar vortex and cold air plunging south. NAO tracks pressure between Iceland and the Azores. A negative NAO brings blocking highs near Greenland, opening the door for Arctic winds. Both indices are forecast to trend strongly negative in the coming weeks. This signals a dramatic atmospheric shift and a classic setup for high latitude blocking. The exact position of the blocking high matters, but the strong negative trend suggests a major cold outbreak is likely. AO and NAO are flashing warning signs for a cold stormy winter. Long range computer models from top meteorological centers agree 
the polar vortex will be weak this winter, the UK Met Office, German DWD, Japanese JMA and ECMWF models all show a persistently weak vortex through December and January, the DWD model even hints at a record weak vortex in late November, raising the risk of a major sudden stratospheric warming event, the JMA model keeps the vortex weak through the core of winter, with no recovery until spring, this consensus means the threat of Arctic outbreaks will remain high for weeks. The ECMWF model also shows a weak vortex, with only a slight recovery in February. The key takeaway, the fundamental state of the atmosphere is primed for cold. The Arctic's gatekeeper is asleep, leaving Europe open to sustained cold. The models are united, expect a winter shaped by Arctic air. While models agree on a weak polar vortex, they diverge on December's specifics for the UK and Western Europe. The ECMWF model shows a blocking high north of the UK, opening the door to Siberian cold and snow. The Met Office model places high pressure over the UK, leading to drier, calmer, but less severe cold. The outcome depends on where the block sets up, north for deep freeze, or overhead for a quieter chill. This is the main source of uncertainty for December. Even with strong cold signals, the exact manifestation can vary. Residents must wait to see which model wins, winter wonderland or frosty calm. The details remain uncertain, but a colder pattern is locked in. 10. What does this mean for Europe? Prepare for a colder, more volatile winter than recent years. La Nina, negative IOD and a weak polar vortex are priming the atmosphere for major shifts. Expect more frequent and intense cold snaps with strong winds and a mix of snow, sleet, and rain. The UK, France, and Spain will see sharp contrasts, northern areas with sustained cold and snow, southern regions with swings between chill and mildness. December's outcome is still uncertain, deep freeze or drier chill, depending on the blocking high's position. The era of mild, stable winters may be ending, at least temporarily. Residents should prepare for temperature swings, strong winds, and increased snow and ice risk from late November through January. The Arctic is open for business and Europe is on the delivery route. Find your heavy coats, this winter is set to make a memorable entrance.